I can go ahead and just click a couple of chapters here. Then I can bring up my monitor and just pretend that these are the places where I need my chapter. If you want to go ahead and look at your monitor and your submenu side by side, you can go ahead and just place these top, bottom, right or left. I'm, I'll go ahead and just do it this way. So now you'll see I've got both of my monitor and my submenu side by side. Okay, the next thing you're going to want to do is just go ahead and drag and drop your chapters in place. There are some automatic ways to do this. You can do it manually, or if I undo that last step, I can click on my first chapter and just go to Menu, Create Chapter Index, and that will automatically fill in all my chapters for me. So lots of great things you can do with Encore. thing you're going to want to do is to tell Encore, when you're dealing with this timeline, what do you want it to do once the playhead or the current time marker reaches the end of this timeline. In most cases, you're going to want it to circle back around and go to the main menu. So all you have to do is just tell it in the Properties Inspector. Notice I'm in the Timeline mode. The Properties Inspector is really important. If I click on the menu over here, the NTSC uh, film submenu. Notice it changes to menu mode. This is what we call a properties inspector and it's a modal properties inspector which means it changes depending on what you have selected. So if I go back down to my timeline here or I click on my timeline here, either way is fine, then it's putting me back in timeline mode. So what we want to do is tell it the end action. We're going to use what's called our pick whip here. We're going to, our end action is going to be to go to the submenu. Once I do that, it, it automatically fills in NTSC film submenu here, and it'll go ahead and set it to chapter one. You can go ahead and click on that here as well, and it'll show you uh, your chapter menus here because you can you know jump around to various places. So I'll go ahead and just say start at chapter one is fine. And at that point, um, the only other thing you, you're going to want to set is you're going to want to figure out what do you want your first play to be on your DVD or your Blu-ray? If you notice right here, there's a little tiny playhead on my timeline. The reason the playhead's there is that tells you what the first play is. The first play, again, is set by the first asset you import or bring in as Encore is building your DVD or Blu-ray. All I have to do is go up to my menu and right mouse click and say, I want that to be my first play. At this point, I've got my menu. I've got my video and I'm ready to go ahead and test the play. So I'm going to go up and hit preview. My menus pop up. That looks fine. Uh, I do see I have to do some editing here. So we'll get to that in just a second within Photoshop because I see that uh, this is a sub menu that I'm using. So I'm going to go ahead and want to change some of this around in Photoshop. So that's fine. But I can go ahead and just test out to make sure that all of these are working fine for me. I'll go ahead and click chapter two. And it looks like it works fine. So I'll go ahead and hit exit here. Once you hit exit here, it'll bounce you back to this screen. I'm going to go ahead and select my NTSC film submenu here, and then I'm going to click the Photoshop button. This will automatically launch Photoshop if you have it on your machine. Okay, here you notice I'm inside of Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and modify a few of these settings. I see I have a main menu button here. I don't need that. I'm going to go ahead and just turn that off. And I'm going to go ahead and change this chapter selections to the title of my movie. Now you can also go ahead and do a number of other things like modify your background. So I can go into my image adjustments here under image, the hue saturation. Maybe I want that to be a blue. Pop the saturation up a bit and click OK. Uh, obviously, I could go ahead and import um, a background. So let's go ahead and import a file. I've got a screen grab I can use from my timeline. So I'll just go ahead and make a quick selection in Photoshop. And I'll just go ahead and just drag this image into my main image. And I'll just put a quick style on that. And I think I'm all set. So from here, I'm just going to go ahead and click Save. Jump back into Encore, and you'll see Encore went ahead and updated my menu. 
So that's one of the great features of Encore and the way that it works with Photoshop. All right, let's go ahead and make a button for our behind the scenes. Remember we had a timeline that we imported manually called DIBTS. So to do that and make it simple, we're just gonna go ahead and toggle on our buttons. And I'll just grab one of these TV buttons here and I'll put it up here. And let me grab my text tool and I'll just modify this and just call it bonus video. And I'll just center that over here. Now, once I've got the button selected, all I need to do is link the button. And again, make sure your properties inspector here is in button mode and just pick with that and you're all set. Now to test that, all you have to do again is go to preview and click on your bonus video here. And that looks okay. I'm gonna go ahead and click exit here. Now, the next thing I might wanna do is go ahead and import a bumper for my, uh, for my video. Again, I wanna set, I wanna go ahead and change my first play. So that's really easy to do. I'm gonna to go to file, import as asset. And you can see I've got my Blu-ray animation here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just shift select both of those. Go ahead and shift select both of those. Another way to do it instead of right mouse clicking is create a new item here and just say new timeline. And as you can see, I've got my Blu-ray logo that flies in. And I wanna set my animation as my first play. So I'm gonna right mouse click on the timeline and you'll notice that it switched the first play from the menu to here. Now, once I reach the end of this bumper timeline, I'm gonna to wanna to take the end action and set it to my menu. Now, just to test that I've done this correctly, I'll go ahead and click preview once more. You'll notice my menu will now load. And from here, I can just go ahead and click whichever one I want. I'm gonna go ahead and click on exit. Now, as you recall, there was one advantage about using Premiere Pro and Encore together using dynamic length that I mentioned when we first started the demo. Let me jump over to my Premiere Pro timeline. Again, you remember it's this pink color, which is telling me that it's dynamically linked to Premiere Pro. The reason this is an advantage is if I wanna go ahead and make a change to my video, you'll notice I've got some green screen here and I've got some other changes. I can continue to edit this video and all of the changes will appear in Encore. So watch how this works. I'm gonna shift back over to Premiere Pro Here's my timeline right inside of Premiere Pro. Let's go ahead and add a Photoshop title. And I'll drag this down to my timeline. And let me just scale to fit that, scale to frame size. There we go. And I'll go ahead and just click on opacity and I'll blend that out to a hard light. Just give it a little bit of a different look there. So now I have the look that I want. This looks great. And if I jump back over to Encore, you'll notice that Encore automatically updated the timeline. So it's just one of the advantages of using the Adobe Suite. Okay, so it looks like our video is ready to go. Um, of course, there's lots of other things you can do inside of Encore with Blue